When I left from NATO in late 2014, and I couldn't help myself to think about that, okay, so a lot of organizations on the planet also suffering because of the supply chain and solar winds, Kaseya, or Okta breach, and all these things are showing us that suppliers are actually almost a system running on your network. So I couldn't help myself to kind of build a system that's scalable enough that will respond to the needs of the private sector companies that we were serving similar things when I was at NATO. 2016, we have been accepted to the MACTOR D7 Cyber Accelerator Program. That's an incubator program funded by the state of Virginia. And I was lucky to get a chance to meet somebody called Mahmoud Jibril. So he was our former CEO. Him and I worked really hard. And of course, that there was an engineering power behind us. So it wasn't a big power. There was only two, three people. Only my friends were kind of working on the code side as well. We did a lot of demo and the kind of the go to market strategy and all those stuff. It was late 2016 that we get the first contract from Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac said, okay, at least the 60% of what you have provided was new for us. So that was the kind of the quality that we were providing at day one. And Mark Hilde was another one. They invited us to a Shark Tank. But when we presented, Mark Hill folks also said that you are the only company to provide us the truth. The others were basically painting a pretty picture. We were basically saying that, hey, there's a lot of problems here. Then you got hacked and here are the reasons why and here are the kind of how you can fix them. So that was a kind of the initial journeys. And then Mahmoud put a lot of effort on sales and marketing as well. It wasn't a professional one. We were just printing marketing materials on the papers, right? So you know how this looked like in the very early stages. And I met John and through an investor, uh, Rick Grinnell. And Rick had worked with me on another startup company and invested. And he asked me to take a look at what was called Norm Shield. It's now called Black Height at the time. And part of that was to meet Jondon. So I met him in the office uh, at Rick's office. So I focused on building some strategic alliances that we could help get the product to market. So I got introduced to the company by two different folks that knew the company well and knew that we at Glasswing were looking for next generation companies in the cybersecurity and enterprise SaaS arena that had a machine learning component to what they did. And this was a solution space that I'd been looking at for a while. I just was not enamored by what I was seeing with what I call the last generation of manuals based solutions. I was looking for something that was more automated, faster time to do the risk profiling, higher resolution, greater detail, and Black Kite had that. We then introduced the company to a number of our advisors who happened to be CISOs and Fortune 2000 companies, and they were blown away. And many of them were using solutions from Black Kite competitors and said, I can't get this with those solutions. I can't get the quality of the data and I can't get the data back in the same almost real time format. So this is game changing and will completely alter how the world thinks about this type of technology or these types of products. So you need functional expertise, but before you even need that, you need domain expertise. Because again, you're working on product market fit and you're also trying to establish credibility with people who are interested. So two of the first people that I recruited were former chief security officers. In fact, I said to the investors, I said, look, if you don't hire Bob Maley, because he's done the whole third party risk thing, he's been a CISO as well, don't waste your money or waste your time. So I guess it starts out in the 1900s, Is it, you know, if you want to go back that far. Law enforcement, that was my first experience in any kind of security, but spent nine years doing that, learned a lot, but kind of got into the computer stuff as a, a hobby, which eventually developed over time into a profession and different consulting jobs, which actually led into a position uh, as the first chief information security officer at the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It was pretty exciting. They never had a CISO before. It was building an entire program from scratch, which was a, a very good learning experience and got introduced to PayPal through a consulting contract. They were having challenges with their third-party risk management program, uh, decided they wanted to hire me. So they tasked me to build their global third-party risk management program and uh, learn a lot of, of the pain points, a lot of the challenges, uh, doing you know 1,400 assessments a year, how difficult that can be. I, I remember getting a call from Paul Padgett. Paul and I, uh, gone back quite a few years. He was in the dark side all the time, but I was on the other side. So a couple of companies that uh, that he was CEO of, I either purchased services or products back in the state or at, at PayPal. And he had asked me about uh, uh, helping him with my expertise, looking at some uh, investments that he was working with, uh, with Glasswing about. I wound up in the seed round of funding, decided to come on board and implement what we were going to do. And uh, that was three years ago.
We quickly learned there were some flaws with the competition. One was a huge one in that they were promoting uh, a rating system that was not standard, that was proprietary. So we, and we knew that was a problem. And one of the ideas that Bob brought in was the idea of quantitative risk and using open fair as a capability that would be a huge differentiator. So then all of a sudden we had two things that we could latch onto. One was a huge competitive difference in terms of using standards versus, versus not. And that was a really a real annoyance for those customers of the competition. And then the other was a huge value add. So you have to keep it simple. And those were sort of the two things that we latched onto. My journey to joining Black Kite is probably a little bit different than most of the people here. We hear a lot about recruitment stories, people who knew each other in previous lives. I actually just came across Black Kite on LinkedIn one day. So I applied through LinkedIn, got an almost immediate response, and became the third person on the marketing team for channel marketing. So my role has really evolved in the last almost year and a half that I've been here. I started in Channel, which is working with our partners, so our reseller partners who sell on behalf of Black Kite. But I think we identified a lot of needs when I first started that went beyond the partner program. So when I joined, I helped build the Black Kite Aviator Partner Program, which is fully functional today and, and growing. But we also identified gaps in product marketing and federal marketing. So those were two areas that I didn't know very well coming in, but areas that I wanted to explore. So since then, I still work with our partners, I still work in channel, but my role has really evolved to fit our public sector needs and our product marketing. I got a call from our lead venture capital firm. Uh, he said, can you come down and check out you know, this company that we're considering for an investment? And I said, sure. So we came in, heard their pitch, and then he said, you know, can you go out and do some diligence on them? I kind of put together my own little script and we actually closed a $50,000 deal before I actually even joined. And so I'm like, that's a really good sign. And I told Paul Paget, our CEO, I said, oh, this is gonna be easy to sell. It'll sell itself. That was probably the stupidest thing I ever said, but it turns out now that, you know, we've got 500 customers and uh, we're absolutely killing it. When I got that phone call, it was a bit unnerving actually, because I was coming from a very structured world of the enterprise. I was still learning, you know, the majority of my time was spent there. So going from that and then coming into a completely different role that was, yes, it's a security company, it's a security startup, but it's a completely different discipline. And oh, by the way, you need to go build this customer success thing at this company. I, I thought what a great opportunity this would be for me to share all of that experience and build a business out of it in customer success. So how are we gonna prove that we are better? So obviously there are benchmarks. First, your application has to be fast enough and accurate enough, right? So the false positive ratio and false negative ratio has to be lower. So that's the definition of the, the quality. And of course, the speed, how fast you can deliver that. If you're, deli if you're delivering that less than five minutes versus a couple of days, it's, it's, a, it's a proof. Number of control items, you can go fast, but if you are only delivering very small, only a couple of things, that doesn't mean anything as well. So the 292 control items versus the closest competitor 110 is actually three times more value right there. Black kites are a subspecies of the hawk family. So when we were looking at rebranding, we wanted something that would command a strong presence. And so black kites have a naturally curved wingspan, which allow them to move more quickly and dynamically through the air. And they also have excellent vision, which is how they find their prey and they find weaknesses in their prey. Black kite is finding weaknesses in digital supply chains. We look for the most vulnerable vendors, partners, suppliers, anybody that you're working with that might put the most risk on you from a digital perspective and so when we were looking for something to rebrand with we wanted something that as uh, our chief customer officer Chris Bush says see into the wild and the black kite being a hawk that really captured the the story we were trying to tell I consume our product just like our customers do it's our front end to our third-party risk management process all the vendors that we use we look at them through our platform first and the ones that have the most probable impact, uh, then we use our platform to decide what we're gonna do. How do we reduce that impact? How, how do we reduce that risk? So it, it's a tool that gave uh, me the opportunity to be able to, to manage 
far more vendors uh, with limited staff than, than the conventional way, the best practices. So that's the one way we use it. The other way is obviously we, we look at our attack surface, the, the, our exposure on the internet, and it, it keeps us informed of, well, how the bad actors are looking at us so we can protect ourselves as well. This is not a team that just came together once we get funded. It's actually handpicked. This team that we are building is the CISO of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or the, the global head of PayPal means a lot. We have the former CISO of Novartis Pharmaceutical. We have a geek from IBM's the head of product team. And of course, we have a very successful CEO coming from the multiple successful uh, startup. And of course, we have a very successful um, marketing team has been proven multiple times. The fact that the team was persistent and resilient and stuck together and we, we got to this point, it's the commitment that we kind of had to each other and people had to make individual decisions. They want to be part of that. And so fortunately, when we built the initial team, we paid particular attention to finding the right people. And we, we got lucky, we found the right people. You know, when you look at the feedback that we get, you know, once the sale is complete, I mean, a lot of software companies just stop right there and like, hey, we'll figure that out. You know, you go and figure out how to run your software. Our customer success team, the customers absolutely love these folks. What they find is they don't just buy a product with us, they create a partnership with the company. And I think that's probably the biggest and most impactful differentiating feature of what Black Kite is. I love the fact that, you know, Black Kite is constantly improving upon um, different indicators that can really be helpful. I'm excited to see what's next, you know, what's going to be the next feature. But thus far, everything that's been, you know, included within that platform has been extremely valuable. As you know, a number of the team members that came almost in parallel with our investment were folks I'd worked with before. So Paul Paget and John Sullivan, shortly thereafter, Chris Bush, who I'd known for a while. Their willingness in the beginning to come in in parallel with our investment was a strong signal that this was going to be a rocket ship. And since that investment in late 2018, this company has been a rocket ship. This is one of the best performers I've dealt with and been a part of since getting into venture back in 2001. So this is, you know, my 22nd year in venture, and this is one of the top two or three high growth engines I've experienced and been a part of. Just to see the growth that we've had, because we have kept to the mission, we've kept to the vision of what we could provide. And three years ago, we weren't even in a quadrant. Nobody even knew who we were. Uh, but now, uh, we're one of the biggest players in the market. The next phase for us is to actually do this at scale, and that's what we're working on right now. So far, so good. Companies are driving towards it. That's what they want to do. They don't believe it's possible until they see it. So we have to not just say we're going to do it. We actually have to be able to deliver it. So it's a big focus on that. If we do that, then this will become the standard in the market for monitoring entire supply chains and ecosystems.